Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 great ideas that ultimately failed when they arrived in Grand Theft Auto Online. So this list is going to be in no particular order today, but I'd love for you guys to sort of make your own in the comments down below, or if you feel like you want to add or take away anything from my list, please be sure to do so in the comments and uh, just get involved and contribute. So anyways, let's get this started. The number one spot today, Stilt houses. So I remember when I saw the executives and other criminals trailer for the first time, I saw these stilt houses and I exclaimed, I was like, mansions are finally here. Rockstar showed people swimming in the pools and doing yoga on the back deck, but they really turned out to be just worse apartments uh, with no access to the outside. Uh, and the features on the inside were incredibly minimal. Honestly, it's one of the biggest disappointments of all time. Rockstar could have done so much with the stilt homes in terms of adding really exclusive features, maybe even doing something more along the lines of mansions. And who knows, maybe one day in the future, Rockstar will amend their sins and they will add mansions to the game. But now the, the closest attempt we have at mansions and stilt houses are not all that great. They're really disappointing. The fact you have to go outside to get to your garage bothers me uh, because most normal houses, it, it doesn't work that way. You can just simply walk into your garage. So I think that there was a lot of missed opportunities there, and I'm not sure why Rockstar made them so minimal. Yes, they're a little bit less expensive than some of the apartments, but they don't really offer anything all that much, uh, which is very disappointing. Number two spot today, the Orbital Cannon. So I kind of get what Rockstar was doing here. They wanted to add something fun and exciting where you could pay an exorbitant price to blow someone up. But unfortunately, Rockstar didn't know how many people either don't care about that price or have unlimited funds due to money glitches or whatever the case is. So they ultimately used the Orbital Cannon as their giant griefing machine. And they also messed up in a couple different ways because they didn't set limits to it. Uh, in my opinion, if you're selling cargo, if you're sourcing a car, if you're selling guns, Anything involved with the businesses, you should be totally off limits. You know, why would I risk selling $2.5 million worth of guns when some schmuck can go in their facility, spend, you know, three quarters of a million dollars and blow up all my hard work in one second? You know, that isn't really fair. So it was a good idea, but it failed because Rockstar didn't really limit it in the way that would still keep it slightly fun and enjoyable for many. The number three spot today, weaponized vehicle insurance. I guess I could say vehicle insurance in general. So I like what Rockstar's done for the most part. They make people accountable if they blow up other people's vehicles. However, when this comes to the many weaponized vehicles that they started adding in 2016, 2017, and what I'm assuming they will do in 2018, they got it all wrong. The person who kills the weaponized vehicles is punished when there should be no punishment for blowing up someone that has the capacity to blow you up. Why should I have to pay for someone's oppressor when with the click of a button they can launch missiles at me and kill me? I'm being punished for defending myself. So insurance in this game has been okay. I feel like Rockstar has honestly run into more problems with it, whether it's you know in-game situations like that where it's just as unfair or people abusing it and them having to delete the insurance uh, system altogether. I feel like Rockstar could have done a whole lot better in this department. The number four spot today, free mode events. So this was a DLC that Rockstar added in September 2015, and the entire update was centered around these free mode events, like Hunt the Beast, and there's one where you have to do like the most amount of damage. I think it's called Criminal Damage or something like that. And in theory, these were really cool. It was a fun way to avoid loading screens and also get a lot of players involved. However, and this is typical of a lot of things Rockstar add, they didn't make it worth players' times, money-wise and convenience-wise. Conveniently, they're very hard to join. They're random. You have to go to specific areas on the map. In some modes, you can't be in passive mode. And money-wise, the payout is absolutely horrible. If you want to motivate someone in Grand Theft Auto Online, money is the king. And these free mode events did neither of those. The payout was awful. The, the game modes were really fun. Like Hunt the Beast is, is quite enjoyable. There's a couple of other ones that I think are really fun. But honestly, no one ever does them and they're not worth it money wise, which is really unfortunate because it was a cool concept by Rockstar, but they didn't make it convenient enough and they definitely didn't make it pay out enough. 
The number five spot today, bounties. So I don't like the whole bounty system and I especially don't like the NPC bounty system where if you steal a random car, a civilian has the ability to all of a sudden put a $9,000 bounty on you. That's just so unfortunate. Bounties cause you to not be able to go in passive mode. And I mean, like, honestly, who's going to hunt you down for like $9,000? Like, honestly, when I get a bounty on me, I try and get someone to kill me as quickly as possible so I can get that out of the way because that will allow me to obviously go back in passive mode if I want. Everyone will leave me alone. And just normal bounties in general, like, I don't get the point of putting a random bounty on someone. I get that we're petty criminals. We have the ability to do that. But I think the system in general just doesn't make all that much sense. And I really don't feel like it contributes all that much to online and its free mode experience. The number six spot today, heist matchmaking. So this in theory was pretty cool because every heist member has a unique job. They are an important cog in the team. However, because of Grand Theft Auto Online's really bad matchmaking, sometimes people disconnect. It's just the nature of the beast. And the way Rockstar have it set is if someone disconnects, you know, that's it. You fail. Where instead, what they should have done is replace it with an NPC or a computer or an AI to fill the job for you. That way you could continue doing what you're supposed to be doing, uh, even though one of your partners disconnected. So I think heist matchmaking is bad especially because there's a lot of money on the line. And when someone disconnects and you fail, that can ruin challenges, it can ruin objectives. So it's just a system that doesn't work all that well. The number seven spot today, the smugglers run air freight business. So I was really excited about this until I found out about the payout. So it's really similar to crates, except there's different vehicles involved and there's slightly different objectives, which I think is fun, nothing all that different. But unfortunately, the payout for that is absolutely horrendous. I mean, it is not worth your time at all in order to do the air freight smugglers run missions. It's just not. You're honestly wasting money doing something like that because you could be more productive doing something else. So I don't know why Rockstar got this one so wrong. They've done other businesses really well in the past. But it's just something about like collecting it and then if you sell a certain percentage of this one, you get this amount of money. It's confusing, it's not worth it, and the payout is absolutely awful. The number eight spot today, gang attacks. So gang attacks, again, another cool way in which Rockstar tried to spice up free mode. However, there needs to be an option to just completely turn these off. If you want gang attacks, that's cool. But if not, they shouldn't be in the game because they occur in areas where, you know, you could be driving and then all of a sudden there's like a blockade of bikers because you ran into a gang attack. Or you could be trying to get a Pegasus vehicle pickup and then boom, all of a sudden there's a construction yard filled with NPCs that are going to kill you and blow up your vehicle. It's, it's just really annoying. You need to be able to remove gang attacks from the gang. Um, I mean, they're nice and they're cool, but when I don't want them there, I'd like them to not be there. So Rockstar kind of messed that up in that way. The number nine spot, Simeon's Cars Importing List. So I feel like Rockstar should have removed this with the Import-Export DLC because that's basically what the Import-Export DLC is, just finding a car, changing a little bit of it, and then selling it. Now it's a little bit more complex, but the Simeon cars are random. They are cars that spawn in the world. And when you get in one of Simeon's cars, you automatically get a two-star wanted level, which is beyond obnoxious. So you need to be able to disable Simeon's cars if you want. The only way in which I could see Rockstar making this system work is if they removed the police stars from it, because that's just the most obnoxious part, you know, having to deal with that, having to use Lester services or avoid the cops. And the cars are random too. Like I know he tells you on text messages, but I'd like never look at that text message from Simeon, especially if I'm trying to fumble around and get a car off the street. So I wish they would remove that. No one does that anymore, really since day one. And finally, last but not least today, at the number 10 spot, we have adversary modes. So there's been a lot of cool adversary modes that Rockstar have made. Sumo, Vehicle, Vendetta. Uh, really soon, we've got a new adversary mode in the game called Vespucci Job, which is basically a, a parody of the movie and the film, The Italian Job. And the problem with the adversary modes is they're either really good or really bad. And because they're so hit or miss, there's a lot of them in the game. And because there's a lot of them, there's no way to get a massive population of the player base to be consistently playing those jobs to fill out lobbies. 
What I think Rockstar should do is cycle adversary modes, uh, and that's the only one you can play. Like, maybe they could do three a week, like Sumo, Vehicle, Vendetta, Slasher. And then the next week, it's another pair. You know, it's Deadline, Vespucci Job, you know, insert another one here. Not only would it cut down on the number of adversary modes, because there are some pretty bad ones, but also Rockstar should make them pay out way more. Just like the free mode events, they got to pay more. I mean, I'm talking like 100000 200000 per round, per game, but that's just not the case. If you want people to play, make it efficient and make it worth your time monetarily. And adversary modes fail in that department also. So anyways, that right there is 10 great ideas that Rockstar ultimately failed at when they were added in Grand Theft Auto Online. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think Rockstar added that sounded cool, but ultimately really wasn't a success when it was all said and done in the game? If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.